Now we're going to add some reverb to the drums. In our Pro Tools session, we've got two reverbs already set up. They're both Waves convolution ones, but uh, with a main difference. We've got one with quite a short response and one with quite a long response. The, the one with a smaller room response is mainly used by us to gel all of the different instruments in the whole mix together, make, make them seem like they're recorded in the same place. So we're going to send the whole BFD kit to that. The other one we use more as an effect channel. I quite like to send specific instruments and specific kit pieces to that. I'm going to demonstrate how I do that with the snare, for instance. Uh, the thing is we need to get that snare out of BFD2 so we can bus it separately to this reverb. So I'm going to show you how to do that. If we go to the R snare bus that we've got here, if you go right down to the bottom you see there's a little thing that says master. If we click on that and then send it to mono 1, that's now bussing that snare out into Pro Tools. Well, very nearly. We need to do one other thing. We've got an aux channel in Pro Tools set up named snare and it has no input so we just go to the input plugin BFD and then select BFD mono 1 so now the snare is bussed straight out in, into Pro Tools so it doesn't actually ever come out of uh, the normal BFD stereo outputs anymore it has its own output in Pro Tools that gives us complete control it allows us to route it to the short reverb and the long reverb which is exactly what we want uh, as you can see I've got two aux sends here set up so I can send a bit of the snare to the short reverb which helps it fit in with the rest of the drums and then I've got the bigger reverb which if I give it loads of that you can hear it's got loads more reverb on there let's bring that down a little bit because there's a bit too much reverb there and that's sounding pretty good so now we've got the reverb set up, we're going to go back into BFD2. If we go to our master channel, you'll see we've got two plugins. They're both bypassed at the moment. We've got some drive and some compression. I really like to use the drive because it adds an extra crunch, quite a lot more power, and it squishes the whole thing together just a little bit more. Uh, so if we go into that plugin, we'll turn it on top left, just like all the other plugins. Uh, be careful with this one, you don't want to go completely mental. Uh, if we give it, say, 10 dB of gain, which doesn't seem much, that will be plenty. So th this is it without the drive. And then when we switch it on, you can really hear the difference that it makes. And we've got the compressor which we'll turn on as well. Great, now that the mix is kind of nearing completion, one really important thing that we need to remember is to as we've had the whole kit soloed at the moment it's sounding pretty good we need to make sure that when it's actually in the mix it's sounding good as well so it's good to uh, solo it unsolo it within the mix